Right, so today I wanted to do a sharpening video. I know I've done some in the past, but I wanted to um, refilm one in a better quality and also um, show some things I've learnt since the last video. Okay, to start off with the tools you're going to need is uh, two clamps, two files. Now, you can do them with one, but uh, I think it's best to have two for good results. One is called a bastard cut file. And it's much coarser and this is really good for removing metal which you're going to need to do a lot of on most axes even some of the expensive ones and second is a smooth cut file now this is for the finishing work removing the large scratches and uh, cutting the micro bevel which I'll show in a minute you may also want to use a stone but uh, really they're completely unnecessary generally I only use the stone after I've used the axe for a bit of a fouled edge and then once I've got the axe cutting good and uh, robust enough then I'll just maintain the axe with a stone so I'm not removing too much metal but generally um, I test my axes a lot using the fouled edge first and I don't waste time stoning an edge that may crumble um, after five minutes of use or I'm going to have to go back and cut thinner anyway with a file, it's just a waste of time. Angle gauges can also be useful but uh, you really don't need them. Um, it's more important when you're uh, trying to replicate an edge that works well or trying to figure out what went wrong or um, you know useful just for discussing with other people if, about edges and stuff because you need to know what you've actually got on your axe to really talk with someone. But you don't need them very handy to have though and I'd recommend getting them but not initially. Most axes like the Granfers Bucks and the expensive ones come with a grind on them but it's normally like a 22 and a half degree convex and I think the problem with them and why they don't cut well is uh, they're way too thick. They start the convexity way too far back and uh, the axe tends to bounce especially when you get into dead wood and very tough wood. How I grind my axes now is to cut a flat bevel. The bevel is this part and the edge is here. The bevel I normally grind to 20 to 16 degrees. Um, so 16 is probably the thinnest I use. And then uh, I cut the micro bevel at about double angle, so about 30 degrees. And that's only this part here, the micro bevel, so I change the angle. Um, either cut it flat or you can roll it, so make it small convex. But uh, this is the most important part for actually making your axe tough. It doesn't really matter about how thick the axe is up here. You know, here's an example of a very thin axe. And you can see the bevel is extremely thin steel. And the edge hasn't crumbled. However, when you put the micro bevel on it, then the edge becomes tough. But I wouldn't be afraid of filing off too much metal on the bevel. And uh, I was watching a Liam Hoffman video explaining his edge sharpening, and I had to disagree with a few things in it. He was saying you want to smooth the speed bump up here um, to make the axe sink deeper. I really don't think that's true. And if anything, that makes the axe very sticky. I much prefer to leave the speed bump, you could say, um, as is. So there's a quite an abrupt change. And I've noticed too that I do that with a work axe to make it less sticky. And quite a lot of videos, um, like a uh, Wranglestone, people like that, sharpen their axes and a vice. Now, uh, I used to do this, but I learned my lesson pretty quick that it's such a bad idea. First of all, it's very dangerous because as you're filing down you're bearing against that and you're pushing down your body weight and it's very easy for the file to slip and uh, I've cut my uh, finger quite nasty um, I've cut my thumb before and that's with the file handle on and me trying to guard uh, my hand and you know it's just a recipe for disaster and after a few cuts I realize it's just a, a bad way of doing it. A much better way is to clamp the axe with two clamps horizontally on a table. Now what I will say with this is there's less danger of you 
um, cutting yourself by pushing down and slipping. But uh, if you stop sharpening and leave it unattended, especially if you've got kids or something, I would make sure to um, take it off the clamp and put the axe away and put the cover on because if someone's unaware and runs past this, they're just going to open up their thigh. So that's one thing to watch out for. But as long as you're uh, not sloppy about leaving stuff around, perfectly safe. Okay, this is the double axe I'm going to demonstrate on. This is my uh, steeper side for doing limbs. It's already fairly thin, um, but I've not sharpened it in years, so um, it's a lot steeper than I would do now. Okay, so what I'll do first is take a pen or some ink or whatever you've got and uh, draw a black, black line along the edge. That's where you're going to cut your micro bevel. And about one sharpie, sharpie thickness is all you need to have a fairly tough edge. Um, I don't really do much more than that. My micro bevel is about um, half a millimeter to one and a half millimeters. So basically, we've got a file edge down to that. So use your bastard file and to get the right angle I just try and scratch the eye. So if I'm doing that I'm removing the paint on the eye so just bring it up a little bit. And you can see I'm cutting metal. Now you can see my file marks are about here. So I need to keep filing till that bevel is cut all the way down to here, so it should be a flat. It doesn't matter if it's not perfectly flat, I mean a bit of convexity is only going to make the edge tougher but uh, I prefer to keep it as flat as possible. But you can see this edge has a lot of work to do to it. Now assuming I've finished that, so I've been basically got shiny metal all the way down to my first sharpie mark, then I would uh, lightly cut the, uh, the bevel with a, a smooth cut file. So all I do is put the file down flat with the eye, bring it up to about double angle and I look very carefully and you can see I'm removing the sharpie mark. So that's my micro bevel. And normally I'd only do uh, three passes of the file each side depending. Now once I've done that I can also um, make a between angle, so if this is the bevel angle, if I go between that and the, the flat, so I'm not actually cutting the edge and I'm not cutting the bevel, but I'm blending the two together, if you want to make a more convex edge. But uh, on most axes, you're probably going to spend about two to three hours with the bastard cut file, and uh, five minutes with the smooth cut file, just taking out the scratches and whatever, tidying it up. And in true Blue Peter fashion of, here's one I prepared earlier. So this is my sharp side, I'll show you the rough side again, more convex. This is uh, more bouncy, it's okay for limbing but it uh, doesn't cut very well. This on the hand, it really sinks deep. You can see there, I've got a fairly flat bevel, see how the light goes across it? Cut very flat. And then if you watch, this is my micro bevel. So this is a tough axe. Um, I tested it with a very, very tiny micro bevel like you'd see on a racing axe where it's almost invisible and the edge rolled slightly. So I just brought it back a couple of other passes with the file. Been tough ever since. So that's one thing I will say is don't be afraid of uh, using your axes and causing some damage to them. Really the knowledge is more important and uh, especially I recommend starting out with a cheap act like a council tool or a halter force and then you can muck around with it, figure out what 
angles work best for your wood, what you can get away with, what's uh, dangerous to use. And uh, without really worrying about destroying a really, really expensive axe, you know. But uh, yeah, if you experience damage, I'll just bring the micro bevel back more. Um, but the thing about filing flat with the eye is now the axe is cutting its absolute optimum. So this axe has a pretty fine angle, about 16 degrees. See how flat it is? Really cuts well. Whereas the other side, far more convex, much more bouncy, doesn't cut wood as good. Now, as I said, um, you're better off using the axe for a while in its uh, filed edge state. And then for general maintenance, if you want to hone it really well, you can use a stone. So this one's got a coarse and a, a fine side. What I will say is do not buy the Lansky pucks, they're absolutely useless. This is an Oxenkopf one which I've been truck testing and it's much better. But really, um, you can stone up your bevel a bit to uh, polish it and that can help prevent sticking. But uh, really the only thing you need to worry about most is the micro bevel. So what you do is you just get the stone and you look for the shadow. So. I close up the shadow. It just 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 when it disappears, that's you hit the micro bevel, and then you just gently with light pressure move the stone back and forth across the edge. So I've watched uh, competition wood choppers stoning their axes before uh, competing, and this is how they do it. So maybe do it uh, two or three times each side and just keep repeating until you're happy with the results. You can check um, in the light. But uh, really this is unnecessary. I'd only do it once you've got the axe cutting well and uh, as a maintenance thing, not uh, not for actually that initial uh, sharpening. You can see I'm holding the stone and I'm actually using my pinky finger to maintain the angle. Kind of using that as a pivot. But you can spend hours doing this and there's no point doing it uh, before you know the axe is cutting well, because I could spend hours polishing this up to a mirror finish, take out the axe, you know, bust the chip out of it, or um, decide it's not cutting good enough, and then I come back and scratch it all up again with a bastard cut. You know, it, it's a waste of time initially until you can trust the axe and know it's cutting good. There's a last thing to note uh, on a lot of the new axes, I mean, pretty much all of them, in fact, um, they have flat cheeks, so. The axe is the same thickness as steel all the way across here. And on those axes, when you grind it properly, you'll get a pattern like this, which is kind of, it's called a chisel grind in timber sports, or uh, most people call it a flat grind. With some of the older axes, um, the steel is much thicker here than the one on the sides. This prevents sticking. But when you grind it, uh, when you grind the bevel flat, you end up with banana grind. It's called so it's more brought back into the cheeks. So anyway, it's uh, not really as complex as you'd think. Um, it's just a bit of trial and error. And don't be afraid to have failures or um, do stuff wrong. I just uh, really kind of self-taught myself and uh, you know had a go. You can only get better at it and uh, the one thing I notice about uh, looking back from old videos is my axes are cutting far, far better than ever before and I'm not really having any issues with durability. In any case, uh, give it a go and uh, find out what you can get away with. Okay, for a bit of a bonus, um, I recently just bought uh, a couple of two day racing axes. Now these are what you'll see on uh, steel timber sports and uh, loose stacks racing. And this is a 14 degrees uh, banana grind. I've also got a 14 degree chisel, but I 
Got them finished by Tuatahi. And they're ridiculously sharp. Fourteen degrees with a very, very almost uh, um, invisible secondary bevel or micro bevel. These are real extreme of grinds, and uh, if you do hit a knot with one of these, more than likely you can uh, bust a big chunk out of them. No, 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 no.